Hello, welcome to People of HTML5. I'm here with Bruce Lawson from Opera Software. Bruce, how did you get into HTML5 and what do you do about it? Hi, Chris. Uh, well, I was looking for um, an interesting 20% project at Opera. Um, and I've always been somebody who's really into uh, accessibility. And the key to accessibility to me is semantic, um, semantic authoring and hence the chance to get involved with the development of the brand new language, the new semantics, was too interesting for me to pass. And so what I do now really is uh, write about HTML5, largely for HTML5Doctor.com, um, which is a resource I co-curate with some other volunteers with some little bite-sized nuggets of, uh, of tutorial. And I spend a lot of time thumping the table and shouting at people either in person or over Twitter for abusing the word HTML5 to mean stuff that it doesn't actually mean. That was one of the questions that we actually had in the interview that people can find with this video. Um, you propagating a word called newt for new uh, exciting technologies uh, instead of HTML5. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen people make fun of that already because it seems to be a strange word and uh, people don't seem to get why that is necessary. So why do you think we can't just use HTML5 as an umbrella term? Uh, the term newt is, uh, is somewhat tongue-in-cheek. Uh, I invented it um, on my feet at a conference. Um, the trouble is with using the word HTML5 is that HTML5 actually does mean something. It means a specific spec. <clears throat> you can widen that out uh, legitimately to mean a group of specs because things like web sockets were used to be part of web of HTML5 and got split out but they're firmly under that umbrella but HTML5 isn't things like web fonts it isn't things like uh, CSS transitions and transforms and it isn't jQuery etc <clears throat> and whereas co uh, clients and journalists are going to use HTML5 as a buzzword like Web 2.0 or like Ajax. We as practitioners need to keep our, our jargon straight because otherwise we can't talk to each other properly uh, about what we're doing. If we say, here's an HTML5 site and all it is the few CSS transforms or some web fonts, uh, we're confusing the issue further between ourselves. So I propose Neuters a word that I could make a cute logo with. Uh, personally, I prefer the Open Web Stack. I think Open Web Stack is a, is a great name for things like CSS, SVG, HTML5, WebGL, ECMAScript, uh, and all the stuff that we know and love. But I, I, I think I'm fighting a losing battle. But um, as a kid, I always used to admire those people who would stand in the street with a placard saying the end is nigh and shout at passers-by and now I'm turning into one. One other thing you said is that one of the biggest obstacles of HTML5 is that developers are not quite ready yet to implement it or are reluctant to, uh, to implement it. How do you think we can, uh, we can change that? Well, first of all, of course, is nobody has to implement this. Um, I'm not really evangelizing that everybody suddenly moved to HTML5. If you have a website that is a traditional static document, it's text, links, images, and a form, you might very well have no reason at all to give a damn about HTML5. You know, it might enhance your semantics, it might uh, make your form slightly sexier, but your HTML4 and your XHTML derivatives, you know, XHTML1, etc., that's going to work forever. It's not like that stuff's going to stop working in browsers if you don't stick an HTML5 doc type on the top. So <clears throat> there's no imperative for the world to move. But what worries me is that people are getting the wrong end of the stick, and I'm reading comments on smashing magazine and site point and, and and other places hml5 doctor saying yeah hml5 looks great but you know ie6 doesn't support it uh, hml5 is designed so that nearly every aspect of it you can use feature detection and once you're using feature detection you know does this browser support this feature that i wish to use and that might be a, type, a certain form input it might be web sockets and if it doesn't support this feature 
you go and lazy load in some JavaScript that will polyfill that, um, the IE6 problem rather rather goes away. Uh, it, this is brilliant because feature detection is the way forward. It's future proof. You, user agent sniffing, browser sniffing is wrong and evil. And every time you do it, um, Ian Hickson kills a kitten. Yeah, uh, talking about polyfills, what I find though, like we, we try to fix so many things at the same time right now, like uh, um, PNG support to, to 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 simulate gradients, these kind of things. So some of the uh, some of the uh, templates that are out there to say like let's start HTML5 now now come with like 20 JavaScript includes and three uh, CSS includes, and the CSS has lots of like. Um, checking for different browsers that is actually rather bad for performance so isn't that a bit of deterrent for uh, for new developers as well because on one hand we say html5 means you write a lot less code and a lot less code we never understood like doc types but at the same time we put much more html in just to fix things for internet explorer 6. i think templates etc by their very nature templates are always trying to be all things to all men um and we, that, 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 that's inherent in what they are. A, a jQuery is the same. A jQuery is a fantastic thing. But I've seen people pulling the entire jQuery library to do one um, expanding collapsing box, which is, of course, um, non-performance and you know, grotesquely inefficient. Uh, the trouble is, is that people don't know how to do something. The, the template promises to include it all, so they grab it in. I still think it's better that people use a template than um, start miscoding their HTML5, I don't know, by using tables, spans, spacer gifs, and doing everything in JavaScript, which would be far worse. I think, to be honest, if you're an application developer, if somebody's employing you to develop a full-blown application whereby you're feature-detecting um, web sockets and... Uh, offline storage and app cache, for example, you're probably at a level whereby you can start looking through the templates and working out for yourself what to discard, etc. Um, because, of course, the, the only thing you really need to get going with HTML5 development is the HTML5 shiv for older browsers that Remy Sharp wrote. Um, and that is, you know, that's a tiny fragment of JavaScript and a, a three-line include. Everything else depends upon the project. There's, there's no point in dragging in polyfills for WebSockets if your project isn't using WebSockets. Um, again, caveat script, or you, you, you can't, you can't make something so with such a broad constituency that it does everything people need it to do and yet keep it lean and mean. I think that's the case with any kind of template or library, regardless of whether it's jQuery or HTML5 boilerplate or, or whatever. Seeing that you are one of the few people that actually come from accessibility and come from the semantics of HTML5 and talk about the HTML5 elements much more than mm -hmm. the APIs, um, uh, HTML5 is much more lenient uh, toward, towards the developer than XHTML or HTML 401 strict was. And uh, um, your answer was that that is good that you can write things any way you want to in HTML5 because the browser will fix it for us because the HTML5 spec to a larger degree is defining how a browser should work, not how a developer should use HTML5. But uh, as a developer, I keep thinking, like, why should I write code and then hope that some other software will fix the problem for me before it shows it? Isn't that bringing a bit of unpredictability to the, uh, to the final DOM that comes out? Wouldn't different browsers render different things just because I omitted a few quotation marks or I used upper and lower case? I'm going to do a bit of a politician answer on you here, Chris. I didn't say it was good that... Uh, the the language is more syntactically lax. <clears throat> it's just a, it's just a fact. Um, the fact is that if you were serving your HTML or your XHTML as text rather than XML, the browsers historically never cared if you quoted your attributes, if you closed an image element with a trailing slash. <clears throat> 
you were almost certainly sending your websites as text HTML because Internet Explorer has never been able to deal with real XML. So, <coughs> excuse me, given the browsers never cared, and given that it's vital that there be an easy upgrade path for people who want to go to HTML5, in my opinion, it's quite correct that the spec doesn't require any particular syntax because there's no, historically, there's been no need for it. Um, so it's, it, that's a statement of browser fact, if you like. I don't necessarily think it's good or bad, it's just a statement of fact. If I were running a development team today, as I used to before I joined Opera, I would still require um, XHTML-like syntax. I probably wouldn't have that, um, that weird thing of attribute maximization where you said required equals required, because that always used to annoy me. But I would still require one house style. That would probably be XHTML syntax because that's what we had been using, so why change it? And I would still absolutely require that you do, um, you validate your code before you come to me with a code review or any bug problems. Um, validation is still a vital part of development. In fact, I, th I think it's more important for me personally now than it used to be because I, I make more mistakes because there's more things to get wrong. If you'd seen me on stage with Robert Nyman in Sweden uh, a couple of months ago, I made awful errors and my CSS was going all over the place because I hadn't properly validated my code because I was being smart art and arrogant and assuming I knew how to write the code. And I hadn't closed the tag properly and so my CSS was looking abominable. So somebody in the audience shouted, validate it. I did fix the mistake and it all worked right. So in answer to your question, um, I don't think that everybody should have a free-for-all with their syntax. I think you should pick one style that works for you or choose a house style and stick to it. But nevertheless, there's no point in making arbitrary rules um, because neither one syntax or the other actually really matters in the browsers. That answer your question. Yeah, it does, but it also um, it also means that we're thinking about a, a markup here for only for browsers. I mean, mm -hmm. the whole idea of XHTML was that I could write an XSLT and convert it into something different. The whole thing about an HTML document on the web is that I could use a text browser or I could use a search engine or I could use a parser to run it through. So what we're doing right now, uh, to a degree, is actually we're saying HTML is only for browsers. And the last time we trusted browsers to do everything for us was 1999 when Internet Explorer 6 came out. And that's why we still have all the tools right now that only work with this browser. So it's a question of, like, do are browsers really the end all of it? Or are web documents out there for other things as well? I mean, I'm happy to say it's only for browsers. And it's probably if we analyze what's going on. <coughs> But we shouldn't be surprised when search engines have bad results when we put documents on the web that are not properly structured. That's true. I think, um, I think web applications, and remember that HTML5 started its life as a spec called Web Applications 1. <clears throat> I think web applications are for web browsers, actually. I think web documents, yes, there's certainly uh, a case for mucking around with them with XSLT, etc., which is why I advise people to continue using the XHTML-like syntax, personally. But everybody, you know, everybody's free to choose. They might not, uh, they might weirdly not want their content scrapable, which is, which is odd. <coughs> of course, if you want to have perfect search results, then you need actually to start marking up your stuff with RDFA and Sparkle and OWL and all the um, semantic web stuff which in my opinion is uh, a marvelous dream but will until I'm long under the ground remain a marvelous dream personally okay on that cheery note um, <laughs> what I'm uh, not planning to be under the ground for at least another 150 years well done yeah let's let's meet then okay. um, the if somebody wants to start with HTML5 right now why, what would you say would be the main reason to do it, and where would you send them to start? Well, the main reason to do it is because if you're the kind of person watching this video, you're the kind of person who's interested in markup and an early adopter, um, the kind of person who believes in feature detecting rather than UA sniffing and 
tests in the different browsers. So you're already the kind of person who's naturally going to be anxious to learn what's what's coming and anxious to uh, experiment. <coughs> I would choose your resources very carefully. I've seen websites out there that uh, uh, purport to school you in um, new technologies that are riddled with errors and I am just about to write a book review of a book which has the most dreadful mistakes. I, I, I wondered long and hard about whether to just ignore this book but figured that um, if we're going to call out good books like Remy and my book, like Mark Pilgrim's book, like uh, Jeremy Keith's book, as a service to the community, we should point out the books that are riddled with errors personally, although it puts me in a weird position because people will think I'm going to pin my own book, but you know, what can I do? <clears throat> choose, your, choose your resources very carefully. Um, we at HTML5 Doctor have seen loads of sites spring up with HTML5 something in the name, which are borrowing our content, uh, changing our code examples, um, and publishing it as if it were right and proper. You, you really have to look around carefully. Um, I'm involved with HTML5 Doctor. I'll have a look at that. Um, you can probably trust any of the resources that are actually made by any of the browser manufacturers, um, Opera, Mozilla, uh, Script Junkie from Microsoft, for example. But, you know, you have to realize as well that some of these tutorials will have been written and then the spec changed. Um, and the author hasn't necessarily gone back and amended the tutorial. Uh, we live in interesting times, Christopher. Thanks. So, um, yeah, thanks, Bruce. That was it. So, um, hope that people will find something out of this and uh, read the interview. And then we go from there. So, thanks very much again. Happy 2011. Happy 2011. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.